Hi, my name is Michaela, and in light of Dyslexic Awareness Month, I'm going to answer some questions for Kathy. I'm a recent graduate from Shawnee Lake School, and I'm currently doing an internship in hotel management and hospitality. I was diagnosed with two types of dyslexia, age of 12, which I dismissed as dyslexia at the age of 18, so a few months ago, with uh, dis uh, executive dysgraphia. What are my future plans? I'm hoping to go back to school next year for hospitality and tourism, um, but the other route I was thinking about doing is doing um, social media marketing and event planning for nonprofits, as doing charity work has been a big part of who I am growing up, and if I could turn that into a job, that would be the dream job. So either doing hotel management or event planning for nonprofits would be the ideal job. One of the other questions Kathy had for me was, what inspired you to write this poem? And that is a great question. Um, originally, the poem was given as an assignment in my creative writing class, but I've always used creative writing as an, uh, as an outlet for expressing my feelings, so I thought that this poem would be the great way to express my frustrations when it came to my dyslexia and the comments people would make. Whether you've read the poem or not, to give you guys a little bit a better understanding about my poem, I'm going to break down my thought process with you guys. So the first section of my poem um, is about, introduces the poem with uh, the teacher asking me to read the, poem, the assignment out loud. So the assignment being the poem. And so I start the poem by answering questions. The reason why I decided to introduce the poem this way was because of three things. One, I love questions, so I thought it'd be a great way to incorporate my personality into the poem. Two, I wanted to use the questions as exemplars of ways my dyslexia has shown itself. And three, being wanting to simulate the anxiety feeling when being told to read something out loud. The poem goes on to explain how I'm having to decode everything. And that part's supposed to basically explain how whenever I'm giving an assignment or whenever I'm doing homework or having to read something, I'm constantly having to decode it and constantly having to almost descrambleize it. De like it's almost as if it was a puzzle and I'm having to solve it constantly before I'm even even, even being even able to begin the process of completing it. The third part, where I say the line of every day, that next part is basically explaining the frustrations and the comments that people would say about me. Um, and then it was also when I finally introduced uh, the dyslexia by using personification to personify her. Uh, by giving her a name, I thought that by giving her almost this personality, it would be easier to describe to the reader what I was feeling with her, the dyslexia. One of the key things in my poem is the, the, the sentence just sounded out because um, whether you struggle with learning or not, I think that is the most frustrating line someone can tell you. Whether there, someone's coming from a good place or not, and maybe this is just how I've interpreted it, but the way that sentence made me feel was that people we're just saying that, oh, you're not trying hard enough. You're just, you really haven't thought of everything. Like, just try harder. Just try harder to come up with strategies. Just try harder to set it up. Just, you just have to work harder. And to some degree, they're right. I did have to work harder. Um, but I didn't necessarily think that that line was the best way to go about explaining that. And I don't think people understand that it's not just as simple as sounding the words out or using a highlighter. It's a lot more complicated than that. And the last poem, part of my poem, I wanted to end it on a good note. And that good note being that because of my dyslexia, I become more creative. And because of my dyslexia, I become more adaptable. And because of my dyslexia, I am more resilient. Because of the comments my classmates have made, I've had to become more resilient. Because of the constant need to come up with new strategies, I've become adaptable and more creative because you're going to have to think of creative solutions to deal with problems on the fly when you're in a classroom, when you're given a math question and you don't know how to solve it, you're going to have to think of ways, or if you're struggling to communicate that day, you're going to have to think of ways to communicate with your classmates in a way they'll understand, in a way that's also easy for you to express what you were feeling or what you're trying to express what I was trying to say. Do I think getting a diagnosis is helpful? Yes, I do. 
Um, as some people might say, it's a piece of paper. Why, why is that important? Um, it is, it is important um, in my opinion because when you're given a name for what you struggle with, it's a lot easier to understand. Um, let me explain that, that, that wording a little bit. Um, even though some people may just see the diagnosis as a big, thick report basically saying you struggle with learning, not what a lot of people realize is that big, thick report explains a lot of unanswered questions from when you were younger. Before I was diagnosed, I just thought that I was slower than my classmates. I thought I was not as smart as my classmates. I thought I wasn't going to be as successful as my classmates because I couldn't do basic things. Like I couldn't read the same books as them. I couldn't do the same math problems as them. I couldn't spell the simplest of words. And that really, really damaged my self-confidence and self-esteem growing up. And as soon as I was diagnosed, I finally had answers to why I struggled to do those things. And it was no longer, you can't do it. And it was more like, you can do it, but you're going to have to do it in a different way. And I think that's a really key thing that I, leading on to actually the next question, my piece of advice to other kids is that, well, two things, because um, I can choose one. <laughs> Um, is learn to self-advocate for yourself because no one will understand better your brain better than you do. And sure, you can take advice from other people, but the person who's going to understand what works best for you to memorize or to, search, stop, to read a book or to solve a math problem isn't going to be the teacher, isn't going to be a piece of, piece of paper, isn't going to be your classmates, it's going to be you. And sure, it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of practice and a lot of trying and failing. But as soon as you learn your strategies and you're sp being able to communicate those to your teachers or to your, to your peers or to your classmates or to your friends, then you can be, become a lot more successful, not only in the classroom, but just in general, I think. My other piece of advice to you is do not be afraid to start over. Um, what I mean by this is that whether you're moving from middle school to high school or high school to university, you're prepared to have to start over. Um, what I mean by this is that your strategies that may have worked for that subject or that time period may not necessarily work for the next chapter. So don't be afraid to have to come up with new strategies and to remember to be resilient because you are able to do the work. You are smart enough and you are successful. You're just gonna have to think of different ways to do it.